sports. Awesome, awesome, guys. Well, guys, um, happy Saturday. Um, you know, very, very excited to be on this call with you guys. Um, you know, I have the honor and privilege to, uh, you know, interview uh, one of my best friends and a mentor that I absolutely uh, really respect. You know, this is an individual that's honestly helped me, you know, go from working a job as a nurse to now, you know, doing this completely full time, which is absolutely amazing, guys. And, and the fact that he's here, um, you know, able to just provide the value for us all is just a truly, you know, truly, truly a blessing, guys. And so real quick, guys, before I get into this entire interview, guys, you know, for those that don't know me, um, you know, my name is Christian Borgia. You know, I've been a part of this amazing platform for you know, about four and a half years now, uh, completely full time. And it, it's so crazy because, you know, when I first got started in 2018, guys, um, I, I realized that, you know, people around me have already had success. It, it's just a matter of following their footsteps, right? Doing what they're doing, you know, saying what they're saying in order to have what they have. And so an individual that I truly listened to um, since 2018, guys, was, was truly Matthew Cruz. You know, this individual, I remember, um, you know, meeting him for the first time out of Starbucks in 2018. You know, I was like, man, this guy is you know, it's funny, Asian, right? You know, he's Filipino, uh, you know, he lives in, you know, a very similar city. I'm like, man, if God can bless this guy, you know, God can bless me 100%, right? You know, if one can, you know, if God can bless this person, right, they can bless way more people, right? And so guys, I'm very, very excited. Obviously, right, we know this individual, right? He's helped thousands upon thousands of people around the world. And so if you guys are excited and fired up to hear from Matthew Cruz, guys, go and drop some fire emojis in the chat box real quick, right? All right, let, let's get some energy on this call, right? All 37 of us, right? And we're going to go ahead and bring up Mr. Matthew Cruz. Cruiser, how you doing, man? Oh, wait. We can. here and excited to – can you hear me? There you go. Now we can. Excited to be here and, you know, usually on the chairman talks, I'm on the other end of the call being the person that's doing the interviewing. So the fact that we switched roles today – and I get to be the one answering questions. This is my favorite type of call. So let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Well, guys, welcome to episode nine of Chairman Talks, right? And so, guys, real quick. So, uh, Cruiser, uh, tell me a little about, you know, your entire story. I know a lot of people here know you personally. Uh, but, you know, tell me, like, your entire background before getting into this, you know, industry, right? Tell me a little about your story. Yeah, I mean, y'all have kind of heard the basics of my story. But... Before getting involved in the entire industry, I was just playing soccer. You know, to be real, my life revolved around soccer. My life revolved around FIFA. I played a lot of video games. Uh, my life revolved around between 17 to 19 years old. I partied a lot, a lot of partying in that two-year two period. So that, that's an interesting thing I don't talk about too much. Um, and yeah, you know, with, with playing soccer at a very high level for me, like I always wanted to live a certain type of lifestyle, make a lot of money, have freedom, not have to clock in and clock out like at a regular nine to five job. And then, you know, at the same time, you know, obviously I was always taught, hey, go to school, get good grades, get a good job. And for some reason, I just never could see myself passionate about anything that I had to be at the same place, same time, eight to 10 hours a day, five, six, seven days a week. And so uh, when I got introduced to the industry back in 2015, that's a long time ago when I started my first home-based business, uh, that I just fell in love with the concept of network and affiliate marketing because you, you have a vehicle where your success is a direct reflection of how many people you go out there and impact, how many people that you help. You cannot level up unless you help your team level up. And in mm. any other industry in the world, it doesn't work like that. And then when I, you know, found I am Academy back in 2018 and I saw that customers can make money with the products by alone, it was kind of a no brainer from there. Makes sense. Makes sense. I, I love that too. I mean, the reason why I first got started guys was truly impact, you know, for me, like you understand that happiness is broken into three things. It, it's time, it's money and it's purpose. Like when I was working as a nurse, like it wasn't necessarily the money issue, but it was. yo it's cutting out i can't hear you can you hear me i can't hear you is that my connection or is that your connection 
can't hear anybody. They can hear me. They can't hear you. They can't hear you. Yeah. Hey, yo, Christian, you might just have to pull up next to me, bro. It's all good, man. <laughs> Here, uh, pull Actually, up the chair. Pull up the chair. Pull up the chair. Awesome, awesome, guys. So, um, amazing. You know, what I said earlier, guys, um, it, it, it's so funny because in 2018, I had a very, very similar reason why I got involved. Hold on, wait. I have my headphones in. Let me take take these out. Um, let's grab, let's grab, grab that chair. That way it looks way better. And then put it right here. And then we'll put this right here. Yo, guys, give us one second. One second, fam. Back, let me turn this off. One second. All right, we back. All right, who's fired up? Who's fired up? Right, guys, going to drop some fire hey, I, can, I can touch you now. This is amazing. This <laughs> is way go. better. Amazing. All right, apologies for the technical difficulties, guys. All right, so um, it, it's so funny because you said in 2018, like when you first got started, it was it was a matter of impact, and that was truly my reason too because you understand that happiness is broken down into three things: it, it's time, it's money, and purpose. And so when I first got started, it, it wasn't necessarily the money issue. It was a time issue and a purpose issue, guys. And so um, why, why exactly I am? Like, why did you choose I am and truly go all in? Easy. That's a very, very easy question. The reason why out of thousands and thousands of companies I chose I am was, number one, I believe that everything rises and falls on leadership. So I took a look at the company. I took a look at the leaders. In other, in other platforms and other companies, there's some good leaders, there's some not so good leaders. But when I got to see that five of the top income earners in the home-based business space out of 100 million people were in IM Academy, even though the company had only been around for less than a decade, it was a no-brainer. So number one was the leadership. Number two, I would say, is definitely having an impact service, something that I knew for a fact could genuinely help people make money. So, you know, because you and I are both sharp, so we can sell ice to an Eskimo. We can sell whatever it is that we want. However, I wanted to find something that I could really actually like make sure that if I, you know, sold to somebody that it would make a positive impact in their life. And then the compensation plan, dude, people don't understand that the average comp compensation plan is very complicated. Number one, number two, they pay out 30 to 40 cents to the dollar. Our company's doing 75 cents of the dollar. We're paying more and faster than any other company. If you were going to do a certain job, would you want to get paid less or more to do the same job, right? Mm -hmm. The answer is obviously mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least is I would say is probably the timing, right? I would say that you would never want to join a startup company. 95% of them go out of business and you see people come and you see people go and you see people try to copy what it is that we do. But at the same time, if you join a company that's been around for a century, it might be a little bit harder to, to share the opportunity with other people. So the fact that we have something that has a solid foundation, but there's still, dude, Harvard did a study. They said your top income earner in network marketing does not join the company until year nine. We're in year nine right now. The top earners haven't even joined I Am Academy yet. Mm. The top earners are probably on this call. Wow. You take a look at all the chairman 750s. Dude, there are chairman 750s that are literally on this call right now so wow. that's why i joined I am. amazing amazing well guys um you know quick question you know question i always ask a lot of people and also when i see people having a lot of success is like man that that dude must have had success you know overnight <laughs> you know like hmm. did you have quick success or you know slow success can you explain that that's an amazing question dude <laughs> like we came in and we hit p2000 in 30 days so wow. it looks like we had fast success <laughs> it appears as if we had fast success but they didn't see that we had roughly about two and a half years of experience in the industry before we got started. So it took 30 days to have a few year overnight success, right? My first year in a home-based business, I didn't make a dollar. If you hit P150, you're doing better than me in your first year. If you hit platinum 150 or made any types of trading profits at all within your first year, then you're doing better in entrepreneurship than me. I try to explain to people that this is a long-term game. 
Like for me, I fell in love with the concept of this being a two to four year plan. I didn't care that I didn't have any results my first year in the home-based business because I, I, I sold myself on this idea of long-term vision. I sold myself on the idea that I don't care if I have to do this thing for 10 plus years. If I'm gonna be financially free, let's say I start at 20. 10 years later, I'm 30. Dude, and I'm able to re retire from a job, walk away, never have to work a job ever again. Bro, that's better than 99% yeah. of people on the planet and it's perspective. perspective is everything. Wow. That's, that's so powerful, guys. Um, you know, a question or, or something I always, you know, tell a lot of people, guys, you know, when, when, they're, when they're first getting started in this industry, guys, it is making the decision. And mm -hmm. you see, in 2018, guys, when I, when I got started, I decided to make that decision, make that conscious decision to go ahead and go all in with this industry. So, you know, Cruiser, when did you make that exact decision to go all in? To be honest with you, I'm one of those believers that how you do anything is how you do everything. So... When I joined this, I wasn't going to join this and just try it out. I wasn't going to join this and just tip my, dip my toe in it, right? I was going to go all the way in immediately. And the reason why is because I remember my mentor said this. He said, look, if you're the Michael Jordan in your field, if you're the best of the best of the best, in two to four years, can you be financially free? And for me, the answer was no. So when I saw that you could do that here, that's all I needed to see. Show me one person who's winning and I could do it, right? That, that was my belief system. Guys, I'm telling you, dude, where else can you go where you have people in their 20s, people in their 30s who are financially free? Thousands, tens of thousands of people in, in this company. There's something special here that nobody else in the entire world is doing. And so, yeah, man, wow. I, I made that decision to go all in right away. That's, that's, that's amazing. So, Cruiser, like, you know, knowing what you know now, you know, wh why do you think people fail in this industry? Like, what is there like a specific reason? I mean, you, you've helped thousands of people around the world. Like, why are you know, why do people fail? A lot of reasons. <laughs> so many. That's I think true. that, number one, I think a lot of people come in and they have false expectations. They think this is a get rich quick. They think that this is easy. Dude, this is a long-term plan. Dude, this is hard, but it's worth it. Yes, it can be simple, but... If trading and building this business was easy, then everybody would be financially free. So they come in with these false expectations. Dude, I come into the business. I'm super excited. I share the opportunity with somebody. I get some rejection. I'm like, oh my God, you know what? Let me just focus on trading. Then I go start trading. Then I realize, oh my God, trading's hard too. Then I get discouraged. Then I quit. Dude, like people literally fail. They, they, they don't even start. They don't even give themselves a chance. Wow. So it's, it's, it's the mindset. It's the psychology. It's their perspective. It's the limiting beliefs that they have coming in, that's really what it comes down to. But if you're that type of person on the call that's patient with the process, you understand that it's going to take some time to succeed, but you're aggressive with the execution, wow. you're taking massive action every single day, then you're going to win. Mm. Uh, I love how you give an example of like, you know, just, you know, it's a long term vision, it's a long term game. Like, you know, for me, you know, I went to, I went through a four year degree, you mm. know, I had to persist through that. And um, I just got my four-year degree in uh, I'm Academy. <laughs> I think you did too. Hey, let's go. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, it, it's so powerful it, it, to understand that this is a long-term game, right? And so now when it comes to trading, you know, like what was your experience, you know, first getting started? Obviously it was something new. You know, you, you came from a health and wellness type of business. Mm -hmm. Transitioning, like how was that? I was kind of scared, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, when you, when you try something new, it's normal to be scared. It's normal to be intimidated, but you have to have, you know, faith and belief that, okay, if thousands of other people, tens of thousands of other people have figured it out, you're going to figure it out along the way as well. And, uh, you know, so when I came in, I didn't try to do what most people do. I didn't try to reinvent the wheel. When I came in and I saw a plug and play turnkey system to success that anybody could literally plug themselves into and win. I don't know why, but so many people are like, you know what, let me do things my way. It's like, bro, the same, you can't solve a problem with the same thinking that you use to create the problem. If you're already in a financial situation that you don't like, what makes you think that you know better than the people who are already where it is that you want to be? So I came in, yes, a little bit intimidated, a little bit scared, but I knew that I was going to figure it out sooner rather than later. Rather than reinventing the wheel, I started copying, pasting, and profiting. I started hopping on the live sessions. I started doing everything that I was told to do. I was extremely coachable, right? If Keani or John or Jason or Matt or everybody who was mentoring me told me to do something, I did it. Even if it didn't make sense at the time, I still did it. Wow. I, and I figured wow. out why I was doing it later on. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, 
we ended up here. So that's, that's crazy. So when you first started in trading, like, did you have any doubters? Did you have any haters? Like, <laughs> don't do that, man. Like, like pursue what it is you're doing. Like, you know, focus on that. Like don't jump ships. Everybody, everybody. Wow. Like I already kind of had a, an established business before I jumped into the Academy. So of course I had a lot of people saying like, dude, you're crazy. Yo, what are you doing? Like, why are you trying something new? But 99% of them didn't have the results that I want. So I want you guys to understand that. Why are you going to listen to someone that does not have the results that you want? Number mm -hmm. one. Wow. Number two is that it just makes sense. Dude, it literally just makes sense. Like when you understand that the top 5% of people control 95% of the world's wealth and either A, they're investing and trading and multiplying their money or B, they have a business and we have an opportunity where your average person can do both. Dude, it just makes too much sense. You know what my mentor said to me? He said, Cruiser, if you want to create wealth in 2022, you don't have to be the smartest guy in the world, but you have to have common sense. Mm -hmm. And it just made sense. But most people just do. They can't, they, they, they can't listen to their inner voice. They're so, they're so, they buy into everybody's limiting beliefs around them. And they're not able to, you know, follow what they know that they should do. Wow. That's so powerful, guys. So now, you know, obviously exactly. Common sense is not common. I, <laughs> I call it rare sense. That's rare what it really sense. is. Not a rare sense. <laughs> That's funny. Well, we'll continue the, all, over the conversation of trading. Um, what product specifically has, you know, made you and also your team, your direct team, the most money? Like, you know, most results. At, Definitely so with, uh, with Forex, I would say steady and bounce back. That's always what I recommend to people because Smart Money Concepts has made our team the most money with, within Forex. And I would say I'm kind of like 50% Forex and 50% DCX. Uh, on, the, on the crypto side, definitely Mike Sotero and Curtis Cobain. What, with what they've done over the last few years with teaching people how to invest, how to create a portfolio, how to do it the right way, that they, they've helped people get a ton of results. So wow. those are a few things. What, what, what are your... What, what are a couple of things that you like when it comes to like the go live sessions? Like obviously, you know, there, there's so there's a plethora of different resources, plethora of different services. Who do I like? Up. Who do you like? And you know, what's like your favorite part of like the actual academy? I like Mike Nav. I like Justin Sayini. I like everybody who teaches smart money concepts. I like everybody. I like the different ways to make money within crypto. I like how diverse it is, but yeah, no, definitely. I mean, you kind of said it in the question, like, my favorite part of the academy is go live because when you have people that have the results that you want and they're telling you, you know, what to buy, where to get in, where to get out. And all you have to simply do is just push the button. <laughs> How many buttons? <laughs> I don't know, but that's all you got to do, you know, like. Uh, and yes, live trading is amazing being able to copy their trades. But my favorite part is the live training is the fact that you have people who are literally breaking down why they're doing what they're doing so that you can become self-sufficient and an independent trader on your own. Wow. That's, that's, that's powerful guys. So, um, you know, another question, obviously you're a visionary, you know, you are a person of impact, you know, you've traveled to, you know, a lot of countries at this point now. Um, as far as your goals and intention, what, what exactly is your intention mission um, that your team has, like in, in general, like for the future? I would say like short term within the next 12 months is definitely to help 10 people hit Chairman 10. It's crazy mm -hmm. because obviously, you know, at the six, six figure level, now I'm thinking, okay, how can I go from six to seven? How can I turn my yearly income into my monthly income? And this is the same psychology I use back at P1000. It's like, dude, all I got to do at P1000 is help 10 people hit P1000. And now I'm a chair for 10. The exact same thing, just on a bigger scale. And so by doing that, you know, and, and helping 10 people hit chairman 10, automatically you impact a minimum of 5,000 families around the world, not including the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that, if not more, thousands of people that you help create residual income as well. So yeah, that's kind of the wow. short term. Love that, love that. So you know, first getting started in 2018, you'd always tell me, "Wait, I gotta stop. I, I gotta stop you, bro." Most people don't know what they want. If you mm. ask them, "Yo, what are your goals? What do you want, dude?" If I go back to the dorm rooms back in <laughs> a long time ago and I ask, "What are your goals?" They're thinking, "Yo, my my goal is to get to the weekend." That's their depth of vision. Is how can I get to Friday, Saturday night? 
That is their depth of vision. And they run, wonder why they're going nowhere fast. Mm -hmm. They wonder why they're like this little hamster on a little treadmill, literally going nowhere fast. Sanity. And so, dude, if someone asks you, where are you going? What are your goals? Mm -hmm. And you're not able to answer that immediately, you have a problem. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, in 2018, you, you always told me, Christian, you never actually joined the business until you, you know, gone to your first convention. Facts. Right. So how many conventions have you like gone to so far? Like, you know, Dude. This is your first company and, you know, going to this. I've never missed a convention. Wow. And there's been a minimum, minimum, absolute minimum of two every single year. Wow. So it's seven years times two is 14. But that's a minimum. I would say it's probably at least three. Why, why is it so important to go to these conventions? Like, I mean, people always say all the time, oh, I've heard that information. Oh, I, I know what they're going to say. Oh, mm -hmm. it's just motivation. It's just mindset. <laughs> like, why is it so important to go to these conventions? I've never seen somebody that say that have the results that I want. That's one thing. Wow. But another thing I would say is, dude, I can give you a million reasons. I would say one is that there's an energy transfer that takes place at those conventions that cannot be explained in words. Wow. And it raises your belief. You get the mindset, the skill set, everything that you need to elevate and take yourself to the next level. So that's one thing. Another thing is people say information changes the situation. That's half true. It's actually the repetition mm. of information wow. that shifts your, your mindset. So you can go to an event one time, two times, a few times and not see anything. And all of a sudden go to an event a third, fourth time. And then boom, all of a sudden you're skipping levels. Wow, that's true. So that's a few reasons. So if you don't know exactly how many days are up until the next convention in Arizona, you have a problem. If wow. you don't have a goal for how many people that you're going to get to that convention, you have a serious problem if you're trying to that's really build the business. Insane. Yeah, it's, it's so true because, um, you know, when I first got started, I was, uh, I believe I was a P150 at the time, and uh, there was a convention, I, or it was a convention, it was an A&MP, right? It was an A&MP. Oh, yeah, I was late. And, um, you know, shout out to John, Leanne, and Cruiser, and Keani. Uh, they're like, man, I see something in, in Christian, you know, like, he, he just hit P150, this is a P1000 qualified event, but I see something in Christian, like, let, let's invite this guy and, you know, have him learn and be in the environment. And just me being that proximity guys, I'm like, wow, like if these guys can do it, 100% I can do it. You know, at the time, like I was, again, juggling 12 to 14 hours a day at work. And I was like, man, there's got to be a way out there. <laughs> you know, there's got to be a way out. And so after going to that, you know, A&P, &P, I, you know, went from P150 to P1000 in less than 30 days. And, and that was just off learning the fundamentals, you know, really just understanding how to build this business, build relationships. And I'm telling you guys, like, these conventions, these events are so powerful. Yeah. And it's not just for me. It's like, yes, so I need the convention, but it's like, dude, like if I don't go to the convention, my team's not going to the convention. And wow. if I don't go to the convention, then Christian doesn't go to the convention and hit P1000 <laughs> literally within that short period of time. So people are so selfish thinking about, oh, I don't need it. Dude. Yes, you do. You need right, it. right, right. <laughs> um, now, another thing, you know, I, I've been studying Tony Robbins for, you know, quite some time now since 2018. And, um, you know, one thing that you did say here is, you know, most of us have never actually been taught the art of filming, right? Mm -hmm. And in order to fill up other people's cup, right, we have to what? Fill up our own cup. Mm -hmm. And so my question here, Cruiser, is what exactly fills your cup, man? You know, I, I, I've been with Cruiser the past, mm -hmm. like, three days. This dude does not sleep. Like, this guy is on calls every 30 minutes, every, <laughs> like, 60 minutes. Like, it blows my mind. You know, he's a chairman 10 closing out, you know, on C25. It's just like, he's still grinding as if, as if he's a P150, man. Like P0, baby. <laughs> right. So what fulfill, what fills your cup, man? My favorite part about the business is seeing other people have success, whether that's trading, whether that's the business, whether that's whatever it is. I remember when I hit chairman 10, I was excited. Don't get me wrong. But dude, when I seen other people go out there and hit a six figure level trading, and just see other people change their financial future, that is a whole nother feeling. That is a whole different level. So honestly, that, that's what keeps me going, is, <laughs> is just seeing every single person on this call level up. So that's one thing too. When, on calls like these, you want to like take one or two or a few things and then take immediate action because it's like, after calls like these, people are like, yo, thank you so much for the call. If you really, really are actually like extremely grateful for information that you got, dude, go apply that information immediately, go have success. And that's the greatest way that you could actually show gratitude to mm. the person that's mentoring. Wow. 
that's that's so crazy, guys. Um, and, and that's true because like, I literally see this guy grind and on, on calls every single day. And you know his his motivation, his pre workout, quote unquote, is you know people's results. You know, like seeing people <laughs> win. <laughs> you know, keeps them up um, late at night, right? So um, now you know, getting started in this business, you know, in, in I am specifically. Uh, what were a couple of limited beliefs that, you know, were conflicting you when you first got started? Dude, the biggest one was that, that I was just very introverted. Mm. We're in a business really? where all you do is talk to people. So how am I supposed to build a business wow. around speaking <laughs> if I can't even talk to one person, let alone hundreds, let alone yeah. thousands? And so that was my biggest limiting belief was like, dude, like, I, I do not know how to talk to people, how to influence people, how to speak to people, how to speak in front of a group of people, wow. especially. And was that the question? Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, that's the now, answer. <laughs> I remember you telling me this, right? Your first presentation ever. Oh, no. No, I can't tell <laughs> can you, them. Can you tell them a little about <laughs> your experience? I mean, a lot of people oh, here are pretty new to building a business. And they're, you know, they're, you know, a lot of my team members, like, Christian, I want to present, I want to present, but I'm super, super nervous. Tell them your, a little about your experience, man. Okay. Your first okay. Presentation. Oh, man. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> you're two weeks into the business, right? I was two weeks into the, oh. into the business and I had a mentor at, this was actually in a previous business venture. Uh, my mentor was at like a chairman 10 level. He was doing all my presentations for me. So I was about two weeks into the business and we had an event taking place at my friend's house. A home event. And what happened was I'm at the event, I'm setting the stuff up, I'm making sure the laptop is there, that the presentation is on point, that the PowerPoint's ready, that the music is good, that there's food, snacks, water, whatever the case is. And my mentor calls me and he goes, Yo, cruiser, I'm two weeks in. <laughs> two weeks in. I'm like probably equivalent to like a P600, maybe oh my yeah, in this business. <laughs> And, um, and he calls me and he's like, yo, and, and I told you, I'm probably the most naturally introverted person on this call. He goes, yo, cruiser, bro, there's, there's a major, major accident uh, on, on the freeway. There's no way I'm going to be able to make it in time. You're going to have to run the presentation yourself. Dude, automatically, I think like my heart like just skipped a beat, right? <laughs> and I, had not, I hadn't practiced at all, <laughs> not at all. Because I was so used to leveraging somebody else. And so I did. But dude, at the end of the day, like I had to step up. So many people are scared to step up, right? And, and you got to get out of your comfort zone. And so I ended up doing the presentation. And I will tell you guys that, excuse my language, but dude, I almost shit myself. I was so scared. Like, dude, I was rattled. You could probably feel how scared I was when I was talking, number one. Number two is it was the fastest presentation you would have ever seen. <laughs> like, imagine like a five, five minute, 10 minute max presentation, dude. I was probably talking extremely fast. I just, <laughs> dude, just got through it as quickly as I possibly could. And dude, there was only like a dozen people at this, at this <laughs> home meeting. It wasn't anything crazy, yeah. but let me tell you this, one person joined, even though it was terrible. That's how you know, you can't say the right thing to the wrong person, vice versa. Even though the presentation was terrible, we still had somebody join. Let's and my go. belief, my belief <laughs> went like this. I was like, wow, if my presentation is this bad and I suck this bad <laughs> and I got someone to join, imagine what could happen with a little bit of practice. So it actually, at the end of the day, boosted my belief. Wow. So wow. that's that story. No, I was pretty much the same way. Like when I first got, you know, started presenting, I had no idea like really how to present, like how, how the confidence wise. And I remember Cruiser, I think we were at like Jamba Juice. It was like four oh, yeah. people. And dude, I was super nervous. But because of that situation and opportunity, that's where it grew from. You know, that's where I started to prove my tonality, my confidence, and just, you know, my excitement overall. So dude, let me pay back that. off that. Dude, yeah. Your comfort zone is your broke zone. Wow. If you are not getting out of your comfort zone every single day, doing something that makes you uncomfortable, then you're not growing right at the end of the day, you're either growing or dying. Right. Yeah. And so I try to make the conscious decision every day. Like it doesn't matter if I don't feel like doing something, if I know it's going to get me outside of my comfort zone and help me elevate, I'm going to do it. My, wow. My, my brain might be saying no, but I'm still going to just 
push through that and, and make it happen. Love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. All right. So um, another question here, right? In, in 2018, um, you know, what were a couple of things you had to sacrifice, right? In terms of your habits, right? That, that really took yourself to that next level. You know, the person you were in 2018 is not the person, not the same cruiser I know now, right? So what were a couple of the habits that you had to sacrifice? Habits that I had to sacrifice. That's a great question. I don't think about that. I only think about the things that I did have to do. Mm. Habits I had to sacrifice. I don't know. Wow. I can't, <laughs> wow. I can't think of anything. Yeah. Um, well, okay. Okay. What, what were a couple of habits that, you know, allowed you to have the success you have right now? That's, that's Better, easy. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would say definitely personal development, eight days a week, number wow. one. Eight days a week. <laughs> eight days you hear a week. that. <laughs> exactly. Got to go above and beyond. Uh, number two is taking action, right? Action. Taking, because <laughs> so many people, they just mm-hmm. aim, 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 but they never actually fire, right? Mm-hmm. They never actually take action. They're just planning. They're just planning and planning and planning. They're in what I call mental momentum, where they're thinking about the business all day long, but they're actually doing nothing at all in reality. So taking, taking action, dude, like prospecting every day, presenting every day, promoting every day. People think that there's a secret. There's no secret, especially same thing with trading, hopping on the live sessions every single day. Same thing that you did to master trading, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, those it's like, as much as I want to give you those, it's like, dude, if you're on this call, you already know what you need to do. You know, you already know what you need to do and you just got to do it. But those are, a few. Mm, love that, love that. Okay. So I know you have a lot of amazing leaders within your organization, your personal organization. Yeah. Um, you know, where did you find them? Were, were they your friends prior to this business or like, you know, how do we meet, <laughs> you know, like let them know. Yeah. So let me tell you the story of how I found Christian. <laughs> right. So a lot of people think we were friends before the business and that is false. That is not <laughs> true. I met Christian through the business. And so basically I was posting on social media, you know, posting events, posting charts, posting my DMOs, posting what it is I was doing. And I had attracted somebody that hit me up on social media, someone that I did not know. And that person reached out to me because he saw that I was consistent. Write this down. Consistency creates credibility. The more consistent that you are, the more credible that you become. People don't want to join you in the beginning because you're an amateur. But as you progress over time, people are going to take you more serious as a professional. And so he saw me and then eventually hit me up. And then boom, I invited him to an event. He ended up getting started. That person that I did not know invited another person who got started, who invited another person who got Christian started. So I met Christian literally just a few levels deep and just through tap rooting, through Mm -hmm. meeting people, through people. And, um, yeah, wow. that's, that's the story. Sheesh. It's crazy because I always oh, tell people, sorry. dude, one of my favorite quotes in the world is the one from Steve Jobs. He said, you cannot, how does it go? Something about looking forward. You cannot connect mm-hmm. the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So I couldn't tell you that how I, how I was going to hit Chairman 10. I just told you back in 2018, I was telling everybody I was going to hit Chairman 10 and not can look back and see how I did it. Same thing. How are you going to find the leaders within your business? Yeah. Dude, who could have, who could have, how could I have predicted that I was going to post online to attract someone that I didn't know who's mm. going to sign up somebody who's going to sign up somebody, by the way, those people quit, who's going to bring in Christian and he's going to go all in and then go smack P5, almost chairman 10. Like you could not have. In this industry like development or book you know that frozen hold on are we frozen okay we're good? good we're good okay All got right. you internet here right um what what personal development or book you know that you know what you know, what's changed your life like what was the that you know personal development that changed your life you know for me it was, it was definitely how to win friends and influence mm. people by Dale Carnegie. Cause like I told you guys, I didn't know how to talk to people. So reading the book, how to win friends, influence people, that book impacted my life more than any of the book. Looking back at it now, there's tons and tons and tons of different books that have impacted me in a positive way, but that was definitely one that shifted a lot for me. And 
Yeah. If you're already someone who's just naturally good at talking to people, somebody who just naturally connects with everybody in the environment when they go out, when they're doing whatever it is that they're doing, then amazing. That's good for you. But if you're not, How to Win Friends and Influence People, that book by Dale Carnegie definitely was the one for me. Definitely. Might not be the one for you, but definitely is the one for me. Yeah. No, for me, honestly, guys, it was GoPro. You know, understanding mm-hmm. the fundamentals of how to build, you know, business and, you know, how to talk to people is what really did it for me. So, um, you know, question that, you know, one thing that really stuck to me in 2018 when I first got started, you know, Christian, you know, you're saying, Christian, build a trade and not just trade to build, mm-hmm. you know, because I, I came to this industry just wanting to trade. You know, I just want to learn how to, you know, catch some pips and call it good, you know, part time, spare time. Right. Well, why do you recommend me, you know, go from build a trade and not just trade to build? Dude, honestly, for me, it's just like, I think trading is one of the best ways to make money in the world. I think investing is one of the best ways to make money in the world. But at the same time, I, 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 like I said, what did I say earlier? I told you guys my favorite part, what keeps me going, what keeps me fulfilled is seeing other people win. I like doing calls like this. I like traveling around the world doing trainings, presentations, meeting people, building connections, changing lives, making a positive impact. So at the end of the day, if I can make money trading and sharing the opportunity with other people at the same time, it just made sense to literally do both. It just, just, I mean, dude, when you have residual income, then you can use that money to trade with. Mm. When you're trading, you can use that success story to share the opportunity with other people and create residual income. So you're making money while making money while making money. And if you're limiting yourself to either or rather than dude, rather than seeing it as an either or opportunity, I saw it as a two in one opportunity. Wow. Put it that way. That's so true. I mean, listen guys, like when I got started, like I was using my income as a nurse, right. To trade with, right. I was utilizing the company's money and, and you know, funding my account through that. Right. I, I was, you know, I had no emotional attached to my trading account. Now, when people use their actual income from their job, you know, and they're putting in their trading account, and when you're losing five to ten dollars, you know, they're they're stressing out like that's like five dollars less than my mortgage payment, <laughs> you know. So having you know an emotional detachment from your trading account is so key. It mm. is so key, guys. Right. Mm. Um, now, you know, through your mentorship, obviously you're with John literally every single day, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? Uh, what's the biggest lesson you learned from all your mentors? You know, uh, being around them every single day. I think my biggest, we'll just use John since okay. we mentioned John. Yeah. What is that? What's the biggest thing I've learned from John? Dude, I've taken so many things. What's the one thing? I would say that the biggest thing that I've learned from John is the fact that he's just a normal person. Mm. Like when we see people making, making six figures, making seven figures, making more than that. Sometimes we idolize these people. And yes, we want to respect these people. We want to edify these people. But sometimes we put them so high on a pedestal that we don't think that we can achieve what it is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. But me getting super, super, super close with John allowed me to see that, wow, like this dude is a regular dude. Like, Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. John's the GOAT. At the same time, he's also a regular dude. (laughs) You know, so that's honestly the biggest thing that, that he taught me was that like, okay, this guy could do it. I could do it. And I believe that a leader is somebody that when you're around them, they make you feel better about yourself, right? Somebody who's very insecure An insecure leader is somebody who makes other people actually feel less than when mm. they're around them. Wow. Wow. That's so powerful guys. I mean, you guys, you know, we're almost done here, right? We've been here for a while now, a couple more questions uh, to end this entire thing guys. But um, you know, question that really came on top of my head earlier was if you can have dinner, right, with any person you consider a mentor in this world, right, who would it be? And what's that one question you would ask? Bro, <laughs> I could have dinner with anybody. I'll tell you mine. Okay, you tell me yours. No, I'm Bryant. thinking. Oh, okay, Kobe I Bryant. love Kobe Bryant. You know, he's taught me persistency. He's taught me consistency, right? He's taught me really how to, like, persist through all these trials and tribulations so really wanted to be able to you know you know attain his mentorship you know like really mm-hmm. learn from him so what would be what, who would be that one person for you i think drake drake yeah Drake's why, the goat. why drake be like, because he's the goat 
<laughs> I'd be like, yo, how'd you do it, bro? That's what I would do. I'd be like, yo, how'd you do it? Amazing. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's just, I can't think of anybody. Yeah. I can think of a few people. Not mm. one person. Great. I probably. Gotcha. Obviously, like, dude, what what he's been able to do in, in the music industry is absolutely insane. Mm, so that, that, that'd be, I'd be like, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably one person I'd like, gotcha. to, like to sit down with and be like, yo, like, all right, you're the go. How do you do it? <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. Quite another question here. Um, two more questions, right? Um, if you had the ability right, to go back in time, what would be one thing you'd tell yourself? I think you know the answer. <laughs> what do you think it is? Believe a lot bigger. I was gonna say think bigger, faster. Or think bigger, faster. Yeah, there you go. Same thing. Same thing. Literally, dude, we're like the same person. Like literally, <laughs> think bigger, faster. Because, yeah. dude, it's all it's all a belief thing. Like, if you believe, I tell people, you, I've said this like a million times, but I'll say it a million more times. Like, going out there and hitting chairman was the easiest thing I ever did. Mm. The hardest part was believing that it was possible. Wow. That's the hardest thing I ever did. Wow. And so, if you are able to build up your belief, then, then I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. This is one of my favorite quotes from Bob Proctor. He said, the moment that your belief matches with any state you fuse with it, this union results in the activation and projection of its plots, plans, conditions, and circumstances. Basically he said, when you believe that you're a chairman 10, when you believe that you're a six figure trader, when you believe you're a millionaire, when you believe whatever it is that you want to accomplish, when you truly believe that, then automatically you're going to attract the people, the places, the things that you need in order to make it happen. That sounds crazy, wow. but I promise you, that's exactly what happens with every person, every time. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. One last question, guys. One last, last question. All right. So um, any advice or closing thoughts you, you want to give and share with people? Yeah. This is something that I said on the last two calls, but I'm going to say it again because it's just been like in my brain, burning in my brain over the last few days, few weeks. But dude, you have to be the person that cares the most and cares the least at the same time. Wow. How do you show that you care? If, if you're in a relationship with somebody, let's say that you have a girlfriend or whatever the case is, you can't just say that you care. You have to take certain actions wow. in order to show what? Right. That you care, right. Right. right? So how do you show that you care the most in your business? Dude, you're taking the most action. You're taking more action than anybody else. Dude, you're prospecting more than anybody else. You're presenting more than anybody else. You're promoting more than anybody else. But at the same time, you care the least, right? How do you do that? You show that you're emotionally detached to the things that are outside of your control. You show that you're emotionally detached to if people say yes, if people say no. If they say yes, amazing. If they say no, amazing. If they like you, great. If they don't, great. So you care the most and the least wow. at the same time. Wow. Powerful. That's it. Amazing, amazing, guys. Guys, well, there you have it, folks. Guys, go to drop some 777s in the chat box for my man, Mr. Matthew Cruz, right? C25 already done. Um, guys, he's provided so much value here tonight, guys. If you guys got some value, show him some love on his Instagram post, right? Tag him on Instagram. So with that being said, guys, have an amazing, amazing night. God bless. We'll talk to you guys here soon. Peace. Have an amazing night, guys. Peace out.